Hey, hey, developers. The state of JavaScript survey is out and there is some surprising results. So in this video, we're gonna talk about some of those results. We're gonna talk about how Vue is ranked, how Angular is ranked, and is it still worth using Ember today? So we're gonna look at all these rankings and I think you're gonna learn something. Now, this is a survey that's created every single year and I think it really shows where the JavaScript ecosystem is going. So I'm gonna give you my opinion on it. So let's deep dive into it. All right, so here is the state of JavaScript survey. So first, uh, I wanna show you this libraries changing over time. It's kind of a ugly diagram, but I th what I think is more interesting is this library tier list. And what they did is they ranked all the different technologies and frameworks into this tier, S being the top, a, B, and C, and this is all based on satisfaction. So what I thought was interesting, if we look at the front end frameworks specifically, they have Svelte at 89%, React at 84%, and Vue at 80%, just on the cusp between the A and B tier. So when I first looked at this survey, I was trying to understand like how did it come up with this because React is 84%, it's only 4% higher than Vue. I thought React was the most popular JavaScript framework. How does that deal with satisfaction and usage. So when you deep dive into that a little bit more, they have this satisfaction versus usage. So obviously you can have a framework or library in the JavaScript ecosystem that has really high satisfaction, but if not many people are using it, you know, it kind of skews one way or the other. So in this case, we have React right here, which is has high usage and has high satisfaction. Or Angular is right here, which has low satisfaction and low usage, which is kind of like the worst of all of them, I suppose. And Ember being the lowest of, 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 the, of this graph here. And Vue is right here. So it has higher satisfaction, but lower usage. And so this is what I saw here. So they have this graph that shows uh, versus all the data points and all the information they got from the survey. So there's four categories, satisfaction, interest, usage, and awareness. So you can see Solid is number one, and then Svelte is number two, and React is number three, and, and Vue is number four. And it actually does it through time too. So you can see like in 2018, what it was and how it's kind of the satisfaction's dropping. So uh, you can see here, Vue was 91% in 2018, and then it dropped to 87%, 85% in 2020, and now it's down to 80%. So at first I thought, wow, that's really not good. But if you look at React, it's pretty much the same thing. 89% in 2019, 88%, 84%. It's dropping a little less fast, but start dropping just as much as Vue is. So I thought that was interesting to see. Um, I know Fireship did a video on this and he was saying that he thinks this drop right here is because of the Vue 2 to Vue 3 migration. But then what would cause the drop in React satisf satisfaction? It's only 4% here and 5% here. So I don't know if that fully explains the drop in satisfaction. Let's take a look. I also pulled another graph to kind of give us more ideas and see if this all lines up. So one other interesting tidbit is this usage. Now React pretty much hit this top usage at 80% and hasn't gone down at all. Uh, while Vue is actually the third amount of the third place on usage this year with 51%. And it's just slowly been going up. It's only like one or 2% at a time. And it really hasn't hit over 50%. So that means 50% of people who have taken this survey have have used view basically in, in the past. So I was trying to think that I know that definitely React is the most used JavaScript framework, but this seems to indicate that it's kind of hit its plateau. It's 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 at its highest level of saturation. And while Vue is continuing to get more people using it, I wondered I wondered if this was true. And and things like Ember seems like the usage is dropping. So I went ahead and brought up the NPM trends to see if the data in the survey anyway relates to the actual data of of NPM downloads. Now this tracks like popular library downloads per week. And it also, it's also a good indicator of like how healthy different libraries are, I feel. I, I kind of ran the numbers to see the percentage increased. And in 2020, React actually gained 40%. It had a 40% increase. So it went from, in this case, like 7 million downloads to, and this is between February, in this case, February 23rd, 2020 to February of 2021 to 10 million. So it gained about 40%. 
But in 2021, if we look at that from February of 2021 uh, to February 2022, it gained even a higher amount. It, it actually had a percentage increase of 55%. So it went from roughly you know, 10 million, 220,000 to in one week, it was getting 13 million and even even peaked at one, one at 15 million. So it had this huge increase from, from 40% to 55%, meaning that the library was getting more and more popular. While Vue, on the other hand, almost did the opposite. It actually had a higher increase in, in number of downloads in 20, when you look at this 2020 count, it started much lower, of course. It would started at, in this case, 1.4 million, and then it went up to, in in this in this one, up to 2.2 million. So it had a 52% increase in 2020, but in 2021, it actually decreased to 47%. It seems to me that even though the JavaScript survey is saying that the saturation is the highest it's ever been for and React, and it hasn't really improved, and Vue is slowly increasing, this NPM trend seems to be showing the opposite where there's actually more and more saturation, more and more people are using React while Vue, it's still increasing, but it's not increasing at the same speed as React. Just to just to see how that worked on the Ember side, because this seems to indicate that Ember's usage is falling from 11% to 9%. And that was definitely the case here. When I ran the numbers for Ember, it actually had a 58% increase in 20. 20, but in 2021, it had a negative 13% increase, just super low. It actually went from like 100, like 173,000, 187,000, and it dropped to 162,000. So it's definitely not gaining, it's actually decreasing. I, I think this just kind of says that, you know, both Vue and React are gaining in popularity, but it definitely feels like React is gaining faster. I don't think it's super concerning for the Vue community, but it just means that we just need to keep working on getting more people into the ecosystem. It's also interesting to know Note that if you look at these numbers here, even if Vue has 3.3 million, React is literally five times as big. <laughs> like there's five times as many downloads. Uh, the only caveat I was going to say to this graph, though, is that it could be there could be some bias because this only has npm downloads, and I know people have talked about China and other places that don't use npm, so these might be. And Vue has a bigger uh, popularity in, in China. So maybe that that wouldn't make up for some of it. But I really don't think I think all things included, they use tons of react in China, too. I don't know how big of a difference that would make to this chart. Uh, let me let's jump into demographics now. And uh, talk about kind of some interesting points I've seen in here. Uh, every year, uh, I've I've looked at this and I've kind of seen who have been who's been taking the survey. So this year, you know, it's mostly younger people. This is the first year I think I've seen age on here. There's also something interesting here. So it looks like most people taking the survey are between 24 to 34, and that the years of experience are mostly five to 10 years of experience. They actually added higher education degree this year too, which is interesting that most people taking the survey had uh, a degree, which seems to me if you're on tech Twitter, everybody's a self-taught developer or career switcher. So I find it interesting that this was the highest category that everyone had a related field degree. So maybe you could interpret this as like, maybe if you had an electrical engineering degree, that's a related field, maybe not necessarily if you had an English degree. Uh, so, or this could be, can, maybe this lumps in people who has computer science degrees and all of every other sort of related f field degree. So that's why it's so high, but I think you'd have more people that either have no, that don't have any higher education or no, or yes, but they don't have, yes, but it's completely unrelated. Like someone got an English degree and now they become, they switched careers and became a developer. It's interesting here. Maybe I just, maybe my bubble in tech Twitter is a lot different than people who take the survey or what the reality is. I don't know. One thing that I also found interesting is gender. When I first looked at this, I saw that, wow, there's only 71% males that have taken the survey. And I look back in previous years, if I went back here and looked at the percentage, it was 91%. So I was like, that's amazing. Like we need to have more diversity. We have need, need more diversity in people taking the survey. But then I realized that 4% of women chose as their gender here. And then it was 5%. So we actually had less women taking this survey this year. 
But what was really interesting is that they have this huge category called no answer. Every single one of these demographics have almost a quarter of the people who took it didn't even answer it. So I feel like all these values are really skewed. And it's really hard to make any differentiation if we are really getting more people into this field, more diverse people into this field, because you could take the survey without putting in an answer. So now we have this huge no answer field. So I'm assuming most likely if we put this no answer back in, the numbers will probably be just the same as the 2020, or maybe it's just a little bit better. But I have a feeling like you can't really trust these answers. And since most people didn't answer, or at least a quarter of people didn't answer, it's these aren't very actionable or not very interesting. Uh, another interesting point is looking at the back end. So this definitely is skewed, obviously, since it's a JavaScript survey. These are mostly, obviously, all JavaScript frameworks. And once again, you always get these cool new hip frameworks at the top of satisfaction. But when you really go to usage, you could see the old trustworthy JavaScript frameworks that everybody loves, like backend frameworks like Express at the top. Next.js has done a great job. Um, a lot of people love Next. Gatsby still really high, but it looks like 81%. It's almost double of what Next is. So if, it looks like if you're creating a backend in JavaScript, most people use Express. I re really like Fastify. It's holding in there. It's gaining some usage, but it's still pretty low. It's higher in the in the satisfaction. It's like 91%. So if you want a hip, cool new framework that not a ton of people are using, I think Fastify is a great a great way to do it. And it's actually been on the survey for two years. This is an interesting point. I saw some Twitter threads going around about this particular question on the JavaScript survey. It's people you read, follow, or just want to highlight from their work. Dan Abramoff, obviously he's hugely popular. Ken C. Dodds, I think we can all know who he is. But it was interesting, there's only two women on this list, Cassidy Williams and uh, Sarah Drasner. There was a lot of threads about trying to promote other people than just men on these types of lists. So that's an interesting conversation. I hope that we can get a more diverse amount of people that people will follow and want to highlight their work in next year's list. Let me know in the comments if you know any great people to follow from that should be on this list. So yeah, leave a comment below. I think that'd be great to see more a more diversity on this list. There is some YouTubers, Fireship, which is really cool. He did a he actually did a video on this. Uh, I would highly recommend checking that out. There's also Brad Traversi's on this list, Scott Talinsky, even though he used to do YouTube, he doesn't do it too much anymore, just like Wes Boss, they're more well known for their podcast. Kevin Powell is amazing in CSS, so I would check that out. And I think the last thing I wanna just hit on is awards. So most adopted feature, Nolish Kolesking. Uh, I think a lot of people have been using this. I've been using this in my projects. Optional chaining is 19%, private fields 9.5. Adopted technology, ES build. Highest satisfaction, Vite. I'm a huge fan of Vite. I've been doing a ton of videos on it. Maybe I should do a video on Vite where I just go through and explain how it works. Let me know if you guys are interested in that. I, I can do a video like that. Highest interest is, which you can't see, but it's Vite as well. So I hope you guys learned something. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of the state of JavaScript survey. Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear it. Thanks.